Today, I am super excited to show you Find a Grave. Now, a lot of you are, may already be familiar with Find a Grave, but uh, strap in because we're getting ready to uh, talk about the pretty much the entire website and the mobile app. So the cool part about Find a Grave is it's free. There are 226 million memorials on Find a Grave. Now, it was originally created to find celebrity uh, graves, but then genealogists kind of started going, hey, wait a minute. And then Ancestry went, hey, wait a minute, we need to buy that. So Ancestry now owns Find a Grave. So we're going to jump in and, and get started. All right, so I've jumped back over to Ancestry for a moment. I'm in a profile and I'm looking at the hints tab. And a lot of times, because Ancestry now owns Find a Grave, you're going to find hints that take us to Find a Grave right here. So make sure that when you go to review those hints, that you're drilling all the way into the website. So here is the URL. We want to drill all the way in to uh, the hint on find a grave. So now this has taken me to find a grave and it gives me uh, information. Now, alternatively, you could just search for that same person on find a grave and, you know, you want to take note of the birth year and the death year if possible to help find that person because this alone probably wouldn't cut it. But if you can put the year, what year did he die? He died in 1955. So if I put 1955 and I think his middle name was Lester, the more you give it, obviously the better chances that you'll find somebody and there he is. Okay, so I'm going to pop back over here because we've already got it up and there's just, there's so much going on here. I laid all this out in the um, handout. Yes, there is a handout for this episode. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to kind of go around the clock here. We're going to go around this profile and show you all the juicy goodness. Just keep in mind that when you are working on Find a Grave, that all of this information has been put in by volunteers. So it could have mistakes. A lot of times, people will put information in here from their personal knowledge. This would maybe my parents or my grandparents or whatever, and they're putting stuff in here. So um, just be mindful that we've got uh, a lot going on here. And this particular guy, Adolf Lester Skunberg, uh, we have his birth date, his death date, and somebody has put in aged 52 here. We've got Greenwood Cemetery. So we're going to talk about this here in just a second, but uh, you always want to really be paying attention to the cemetery. Okay. And then our location, it even gives us the plot number and the memorial ID. Now the memorial ID is really important. Make note of it, put it in your research notes, put it on your ancestry account. So let's go back to ancestry for a second. You could say yes and accept this. But I want you to take it a step further and put this information into your research notes. And there's a reason why, and I'll explain here in just a moment. But if you are on, where am I going? Back here. And you take note of that memorial ID and you put it into your research notes, you can search Find a Grave by the memorial ID alone. Now, you also want to take note that in a lot of cases, there's an image here. We're going to pop into that here in a second. You've also got a photos tab where you're going to find this stuff as well. And flowers, we're going to talk about that here in a second. Now, you could share this out to your social media if you want. In fact, let's look at that. See here, we've got several choices. You could actually email it to another family member or whatever. And you can save it to Ancestry, a virtual cemetery, the clipboard, or print it. Now, what are these things? Okay, you know what Ancestry is, right? So you could save it to Ancestry just like as if you were going to say yes here. It would attach it to someone in your tree. So if you click on this, what you need to do is then put, you know, who this is in your tree. I didn't even type but three letters and it popped up because he's already in my tree, okay? Uh, we could actually add, so there's, see, there's other people here. There is Nora, Louise, we got Ruth, we got Verna. But for now, we're going to say uh, save and we've successfully saved. Now, I personally don't like to add a lot of people, like even on census records, I don't like to go and add all those people because what happens is, what if, let's say Nora down here was already in my tree and I had added her again from here. 
What if I'd already done that? Now I've got two references of the same record in there. Ancestry is going to deliver me hints anyway, because I've attached Adolf here and Adolf and Nora are on the listed here as family members. Ancestry smart enough. The algorithm's going, Hey, wait a minute. If Adolf is attached, then let me deliver a hint for Nora to find a grave because she's over there as well. And those two are linked. So, um, you know, this is all that AI technology that's really helping us out. All right, so let's talk about photographs. So there's a couple different ways that we can talk about photographs. We could actually drill in right here. We could drill in right here. Here's an, uh, an obituary, which is really helpful. You don't always see obituaries on Find a Grave. Or we could click into the Photos tab. We're gonna click in here. Now, when we scroll down, we can click into the image and we can see some Im information here. And this happens to be a really good image. Um, but what we could do is view the original image over here and really get in and see uh, some of this information. If it's a, one of those tombstones that's really hard to read, getting into this level at the original level could be really helpful. Plus, you might want to download this image while you're here. So if you were saving it, I would save it something like Skunberg. I usually like to put the source in there. And so I don't have a folder for Adolf, so I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to say Skunberg. Everything gets the same nomenclature. Okay, so I, now I've created a folder. I'm going to hit save and now that image is saved to that file. So I've saved the original, which is the high quality original. This is a really good image. It's also got, you can see shadows. So if you're ever out taking photographs, you might actually want to create those shadows with a flashlight or some sort of light because sometimes uh, the images are really, really hard to read. Okay, so we've saved the image. I'm going to close out of this. We could definitely want to save this as well as transcribe it. In this case, you can see that this image was added by a person. And so she did thankfully put the Rocky Mount Telegram, Rocky Mount, North Carolina and the date and page two. This is awesome information. Please do this anytime you are uploading a newspaper article so that people can find it again later if they wish, because having source information is just huge. So you definitely want to uh, save this image and you want to transcribe this information because it's really uh, key information as to where this person's buried and all the little details surviving his wife, Mrs. Blanche Knox Skunberg, three daughters, Nancy Carroll and Irene. So we've got some good information to add to our family tree. Hey, we're going to get back to that video here in just a moment, but I want to let you know that Genealogy TV has a website, a newsletter, and a Facebook page. Links for all of that are in the show notes below. All right, let's get back to it. While we're talking about photos, let's talk about requesting a photo. Let's say there are no photos here. Let's go back to the memorial for a second. You can also request a photo from here. So when you request a photo, what's happening is people in the area are going to people that are volunteer photographers for find a grave. Um, and we're going to talk about how to do that here a little bit later, but they will go out and photograph the tombstone for you a lot of times. Now be patient because there, you know, it may take a year before somebody actually gets out there, but people are constantly, uh, adding, you know, photographs to that. And now, you know, these days with smartphones, it's super easy just to go out and take a couple pictures. And a lot of times the cemetery themselves have employees that will go out and take those photographs if they happen to be watching for photo requests from their cemetery. So uh, that is another really great option. So let's talk about flowers. Flowers are one of my very favorite tricks. A lot of people do not realize that you can leave flowers. Now, don't go down here. This is like someone trying to sell you flowers, right? Go over to the flowers tab and you can see other people that have left virtual free flowers, right? These people may be relatives. So it's important to think about that. You could drill into the person's profile, email them and say, Hey, do you know any more about this person? But what you want to do is you want to leave flowers. I do this all the time. 
And so what I'm going to do, I always pick these little yellow flowers. Don't ask me why, you know, I don't know. And let's just say, I'm going to say my husband's and you know, you could put your relationship there. You could put more information about the person if you wanted to, and then you can add flowers. The best part about having flowers on here is because now you've given a timestamp to yourself as to when you were here last. So I believe me, I've come back 10 years later and go, oh, I've already been here. But is there any new information? Let's look around, you know? And then there may be new people. So you can say, okay, I was here on such and such a date. So-and-so was here, so-and-so was here at different times. So it could be, all right, so let's say I come back 10 years later and there's new people on here. It's like, oh, maybe I need to reach out to them. Leaving flowers is a really great trick to connecting with others, to know when you've been there before. And so just make sure that you're, you're leaving flowers on the families that you are interested in. Absolutely, without a doubt, one of my very favorite parts about Find a Grave is the virtual cemetery. So how you would do that is you would basically create a, a virtual cemetery by just simply adding a person. So if I hit save to and hit virtual cemetery, I can add her to the Knox family cemetery. I could add her to others. I could create a new one by simply creating a name. Uh, you can manage them by, you know, and remove them if you wish but just simply clicking a button and adding it and hit save, she's added to the virtual cemetery. So how do you find those virtual cemeteries? And by the way, the whole point of the virtual cemetery is to add all of the Knox family into one virtual cemetery. Doesn't matter if they are on six different uh, cemeteries around the world, they could all be in one virtual cemetery. So to find them, you go up to your profile and right here you can click on virtual cemeteries and you can see all the virtual cemeteries that I have. So in this case, I have a booth virtual cemetery with three people in it. So as I find more, I can keep adding them to the virtual cemetery. All right, let's talk about ownership of memorials. And what I'm talking about is I'm on this memorial over here. If you go up to your name and select my memorials, you'll see everything that you have contributed, meaning you created the memorial and uploaded those images if you had them. You can create a memorial without uploading pictures. All right, so these are people that I put in. I have ownership of these memorials. Let's go to Fanny. For a moment. As you can see here, you can see I uploaded, I'm the photographer, we'll talk about photographers in a minute, but I've uploaded these images, okay, and here it says edit. I can hit the drop down and I can say edit this memorial, I can transfer it to another person, I can report a duplicate, let's say somebody else has created the same thing and and uh, Ancestry, hopefully, you know, or Find a Grave folks will maybe merge those. It just depends. Okay, so because I'm owner, I have this edit button. Well, let's look at one that I'm not an owner of. So here is uh, my great-grandfather, George W. Simmons, and I am not the owner of this one. So here it says suggested edits. So if I click the down arrow, I can suggest edits to the owner of this memorial. If I hit suggest edits, I'm going to end up sending this information to the owner of this profile. Now, a lot of people complain that there are errors in Find a Grave. This is where you would suggest those edits. Now, also keep in mind that if I'm going to go back, if that person is not responding to your suggested edits, uh, then you can contact Find a Grave and see if you can take over as the owner of that memorial. It could be that the person has passed away and they are no longer able, clearly, to take care of that memorial. Now, if you are on a memorial that you do not own, you can scroll all the way down and see who created the original memorial. And you can actually drill into them and reach out to them and email them again through the memorial site. And here's another cool little tip. Look at this, source citation, copy, paste into your research notes, that easy. You don't actually have to write the source citation. This is perfectly acceptable for the hobbyist. If you were a professional, uh, then you might want to, you know, break out the Elizabeth Schoen Mills evidence explain book and make sure that you are writing it properly. A couple other things I want to point out about that. You can actually suggest edits from up here as well. You can also request photographs and you can transcribe photos. 
Every time I go to this transcribe photo thing, there's nothing there to transcribe. But if you hit suggested edits here, now you get a kind of a different menu and it shows suggested for me, meaning people have suggested that I change something on a, a memorial that I am managing and then suggest suggestions I've sent would also be here. So that's a way that you can kind of follow up. You can sort by memorial, cemetery, managed by, and date suggested. Now back over here on Fanny Knox's profile, I just wanted to point out that there, you know, you've got these tabs up here too. So not only can you search by memorial, but you can also search by cemeteries. You can search famous people if you wish, and you can contribute. So let's talk about being a contributor. So a contributor can happen in a couple different ways. You can add memorials about people that you know, but what I advise you to do is search for that person first to make sure they're not already at, on find a grave. You hit add a memorial. You can type in the cemetery follow the prompts, it's that easy, and add it. Now, when you do, you are going to become the manager of that, of that memorial. So just be mindful of that, but don't be scared of that. There's nothing wrong with it. All right, here I'm on another profile, and I want to add a photograph to this memorial. Even though I do not own this memorial, it is owned by this person, as we saw when we scroll to the bottom we could see that it was owned by someone else i'm going to add a photograph and it says select photographs i'm going to add this photograph right here for the front gates of the union cemetery in steubenville ohio where he is buried and i'm adding that right now and there it is i'm going to say front entrance and i'm going to say it's an other because it's not it's not a grave, it's not a person, it's not a family. And it gives you some, if your image is too large, it'll give you some details as to why it's too large. And I'm gonna hit done. And now that image has been uploaded. It says that I uploaded it. Now, one of the things that I wanted to show you too is you can drill in to the person. I'm gonna drill into myself just to show you. You can drill into the photographer and then you can take a look at, you know, are they allowing you to use their images elsewhere? In this case, I said, yes, go ahead. I'm saying that automatically so people don't reach out to me all the time because ethically, we're supposed to be asking if we can use their photographs. You can also see messages to and from this person. Here, I'm not going to drill into that because there's some private information in there. You can see what this person has done. So the photographer is interested. If you see that they have added thousands of memorials or even hundreds of memorials, they probably don't know any more information. So it might not be worth reaching out to them because they're probably just a hobbyist who is answering the request for photographs. Might be that they're an employee of the cemetery. So you never know. You might want to go ahead and, and reach out to them and say, hey, do you know any more about this? And so you can reach in and email them and ask them. So you can kind of tell based on the numbers here if they might be a family member. If there's not a lot of memorials, in this case, I've added 10, right? So. I'm probably a family member or know something about those people that I added information to. So just be mindful of that. You can email them directly. Uh, and yes, they can see your email address. One of the things that you might want to also do is drill into the photographer and then click on the follow button and follow them because if they are family members, they may be uploading more information that you might, might be interested in. Okay, let's talk about contributing. So if you want to, now we're on the contribute tab here at the top. You, we've talked about adding memorials. You can upload photographs just like I did a moment ago with the memorial that I did that I did not own, but I could still upload photographs, okay? You can, you can hit this transcribe button, but every time I, I go here, there's nothing there. So um, you can request photographs like we talked about from here as well. I usually do it from the memorial. You can do the suggested edits and you can also upload a spreadsheet. So this might be really more beneficial for people that are working at a cemetery and they are going to upload a lot of memorials all at one time. I personally don't see a, a big use for this for the average genealogist. All right, let's pretend for a moment that you want to be one of those volunteers that goes out and gets photographs for other people in the cemeteries in your area. This is a great way to help contribute and kind of go for a walk in the park and get out and especially in the springtime and the fall. It's wonderful. Um, I've got some tips for you on how to do that. But what we want to do is we want to click on the photo requests area and these are open requests. And what we want to do is we want to like pick current location. All right. So now you can see 
some of the requests that are in my area, okay? And so what you wanna do is if you want, you don't even have to sign up, right? To be a volunteer, you could just go claim some of these. So you would click claim and you'd run out there and see if you can find it. Um, I typically fulfill them without claiming them just because I don't wanna claim it and then go out and find that the, the tombstone is not there to be found because it's been removed or whatever. That's his personal preference, but you can claim it and go out and try and fulfill it. And when you fulfill it, then you can come back, you know, like if you come back to your desktop, you could do it, but you can actually uh, fulfill it right from your cell phone, which is a better option because then you can add GPS to it if you choose. So if you wanted to, you could click in here, you could see where the cemetery is, you can click into the cemetery and learn more. And so if you wanna do this, here's what I suggest you do. One, contact the cemetery and get a map of the location so that you're not walking all over the cemetery trying to find uh, this because it may not show you plot 4A or something. It could be that it, you know, a huge cemetery. This particular cemetery is giant and you could be out there for days looking for this cemetery. So contact the office if there is one and see if you can find out wh what plot this person is and then go out there like if you're going to, especially if you're going to go out to several of them, you might want to try and see if you can find it. Now, some of these, like I was looking into this Freeman uh, Cemetery the other day, and it has a lot. And in looking at some of the photographs of it, it's out in the woods, out in the middle of nowhere. And, you know, it's, look at this picture. It This is an old rundown cemetery. And actually, this is prior to a hurricane. After the hurricane, a lot of these trees are down over the cemetery. So it could be that you need to be careful when you're going out there, first of all. Um, in a place like this, I would be wearing boots in case there are snakes out there. Take some water with you. Take a rake and a brush. And I did a whole other video on how to do this. I will leave links in the show notes for that. But it could be that, you know, you're running into a situation like this, but boy, this one really needs some attention. And clearly it's a, it's a, it's a walk back in there. Uh, there is no road right next to this particular cemetery. So you might want to uh, just be mindful of that. Make sure that you're taking water, snacks, you know, that kind of thing. If you're going to be out there for a while, protect yourself from the sun you know, all of those precautions. So the other thing too is that if you want to, you could download this whole list, uh, which is advisable if you're gonna go out and do several different memorials or different uh, graves in the same area. You might just wanna download the whole list and see if you can find them and fulfill them all on the spot from your cell phone. I'll show you how to do that here in a moment. You can also take a look at requests that I uh, claimed. So if I had hit this claim button, claim, 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 and then I can come over here and see that list as well. And then any requests that I have requested of others is here as well. And you can see that I have requested over the years, several of them, and they have all been fulfilled by other people, which is really awesome. So always make sure that you reach out to that person and thank them for the photograph. Let's jump in the car and go over to a local cemetery and fulfill one of those requests. And I'll show you how you can do it on your mobile app. So right when you get there, open the mobile app. Do you want to take pictures of the entrance and wide shots and close-ups of the memorial in the cemetery? Now, I did this one a little differently in that, you know, I, instead of taking the photographs and adding them to the Find a Grave app right there when I was in the cemetery, had I done that, I would have been able to attach the GPS. I did not do that. I took the photographs. I had the app open to help find the grave, but I took the photographs, then I came home, I plugged it in and transferred those photographs to my computer so that then I could use uh, the desktop version of Find a Grave to upload those photographs as I showed you before. So a lot of times what I will do is I will go out, as you saw in that little montage, I went out and took the photographs and uploaded them later. You can actually do it right from your cell phone. 
and you can see on the self on your cell phone that you have my memorials, my virtual cemeteries, my claims. So if you do claim it, it will be on your cell phone and then you can fulfill it uh, right from your cell phone. And then you can see others that in my case, there are 47 requests in the area where I live. And so uh, you can go straight to the memorial and upload it either from your desktop. Like what I do is I just download the photographs and then upload them on my desktop. I just find it easier that way, but you can do it right from your cell phone. And when you do that while in the cemetery, if you have GPS turned on on your cell phone, then it will actually mark your location exactly where you are. You can see that I have uploaded several from my cell phone years ago uh, in Tarboro when I was adding all of these memorials there. But when you're claiming them, uh, I certainly would suggest that you do claim them. You don't have to. You can actually go fulfill them as I did uh, with this one. But uh, long story short is I think it's best um, to do it right from the cemetery, which in this case, when I was doing that, I didn't do it, but, uh, consider that, consider being a, a volunteer because it's a lot of fun and you can get outside, breathe some fresh air, especially if the weather's nice and really help some folks out that, uh, may need some of the information that are on those tombstones and those memorials. As a reminder, there is a handout for this episode. And as you can see, it is, boy, uh, nine pages long. I'm still polishing it up, so I don't know that it will continue to stay nine pages. But anyway, that is available uh, in all of the usual places as a channel member, as a uh, information access level channel member, as a patron at the Happy Dance level, or you can purchase it at genealogytv.org. There are three ways you can get the handouts. Now, the first way is to join the channel membership here at the information access level channel membership on the YouTube channel, and then go to the community tab and you'll find the posts that have the handout links in there. All you have to do is follow the link and download the handouts. Okay, now the second way is over at Patreon. Now at Patreon, if you're at the happy dance level or higher, uh, you can get the handouts those come directly to you in an email every time we announce the new video that has a handout with it. You'll also get early release with that membership. All right, and then the third way is just to go over to genealogytv.org and click on the handouts tab and you can find all the handouts there for individual purchase. So uh, I hope that was helpful. The handouts really do support the channel and for that, I thank you. With that, I hope that was helpful. There is so much that you can do on Find a Grave. I hope you will take advantage of it and use it. It is free. Just remember that some of the information is um, put up by volunteers, and so it may not be absolutely perfect. So always, always, always verify with records and, uh, and have a good time with Find a Grave.